Doctors of Reddit. What made you say, how the F is this person still alive? I helped take care of an old dude who had one leg amputated. And had broken his other leg so he was seeing us because of that. He was on oxygen and not being very compliant with using his wheelchair. We were talking with him and he was getting really argumentative. How am I supposed to chop wood in a wheelchair? Was what he kept demanding. When asked how he was chopping wood with one leg in the first place he responded that he'd crawl into the woods and hop up to chop the wood. This was even more concerning. When the doctor asked how he was carrying his axe, oxygen, and the wood he chopped he looked him straight in the eye and said, I carry him on my back. Not sure if he was serious, but he was pretty dang grizzled and looked like he may have been crawling through the woods. So I'm imagining in my head a one-legged bear of a lumberjack with a face full of hair crawling through the woods in winter with eyes looking up and ahead. Thirsting at the oak a hundred meters from his cabin. Takes him an hour to crawl with 15 kilograms of life support equipment and a tree-killing axe. Does a one-arm push jump from prone and fells the oak twice his width with one stroke. Ties all of the 50 meters oak to his waist with a chain and crawls back takes him half an hour had a lady walk into the hospital with her face pointed at her chest her c1 vertebra had somehow fallen off c2 with her spinal cord delicately draped across the odontoid process no damage to anything repaired with slow traction and a halo for a little while still baffles my mind five years later a guy the first know with cancer smokes two packs a day and drinks a fifth of fireball every day. He lives in a trailer so dirty there is a half inch of dirt according to his wife's mother. He recovered from surgeries in that trailer. Eventually we got word he was quitting chemo and was just going to accept death. Five years ago he was given two months to live. He is now completely cancer free. Life is just weird sometimes. Young girl driving a car gets T-boned on the passenger side by an Ultima going at least 70 miles per hour. Her car looks like it was hit by an IED so we assumed she was deceased upon arrival when the other crew on scene said our focus was extricating the people in the Ultima. Girl driving was completely unhurt. By a Volvo. This is why the car talk guys would always recommend a Volvo to any caller asking about what car to get the teenager. Not a doctor. A classmate of mine in HS was out snowmobiling in the middle of the night. He was going about 50 miles per hour down a trail. Summer hole had put a chain across the trail just to be in a hole. He didn't put reflectors on it and it wasn't even on his own land. It was on state land. Unfortunately, my classmate had a back rest on his sled. The chain hit him square across his chest. It slammed him into the back rest which fortunately broke off. He rode back home and crawled into bed. Later, his mom made him go to the local clinic that had a small ur. They life flighted him down to Duluth immediately. He had a ruptured spleen. Part of his liver was torn. His heart was badly bruised. And he had a collapsed lung. He was bleeding pretty bad internally. The doc told him that. If he hadn't been so muscular, he would have died out on the trail. The man was about 6 feet and 245 pounds and ripped like a bodybuilder when he started. Six months and a bunch of surgeries later. He was maybe 130 pounds. He looked like death and his whole chest was railroad tracks. They had to crack his chest twice to deal with his heart and opened up his abdomen numerous times to deal with infections. Now. He's the same loud crazy person he always was. A successful business owner with a wife and kids. Everyone thought he was going to die. Including the doctors. But he pulled through. One of my prior patients is a roofer who lived a very full life of drinking. Women. And whatever. He was infected with all sorts of diseases. And was cirrhotic and didn't really care about his health at all. He was ghostly thin and weighed 110 pounds on a six-foot frame. Which included 20 pounds of ascites in his abdomen. He was angry and didn't listen to anyone. 
refusing therapy most of the time. I met him first in the ICU, where he had full-blown end-stage liver disease, hepatorenal syndrome, unexplained lymph nodes all over his body, thariceal hemorrhage, Kaposi's sarcoma, and spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. Prognosis of in-hospital death was greater than 90% even with therapy. I was involved in his care for about two weeks and again he refused every therapy that his primary physicians suggested. I was surprised he lasted the two weeks. Finally, he was so fed up of the noisiness in the ICU that he requested transfer to palliative care and was eventually sent to a hospice for patients with advanced HIV to live out his remaining few days. One year later I get a call from the hospice requesting a follow-up appointment for him. I was shocked that he was still alive and asked if I could talk to him. He was all better. Turns out he had the hots for his nurse in the hospice and did everything she asked in order to please her including taking his medications for the first time. She had slowly nursed him back to health, convinced him to restart HIV meds, put him on a low-salt diet for his liver disease, and then eventually got him up and mobile. He spent another six months in a rehabilitation facility, then went back to work. He saw me in follow-up for a while as we treated his hepatitis C. Then his cirrhosis shockingly improved. After a couple of years he moved away to another place to start a construction company and became rather successful financially. And remains abstinent on his former vices. He's the only person that I've seen come back from death. When I was in college, there was a kid that exited a freeway at near freeway speed. Problem was, it was a construction zone at night. No lights. And it wasn't supposed to be an open exit drove right into a pile of rebar. One of the poles went through the car into his face and pinned him to the seat through his head. A couple of years later, I was in grad school, in anatomy seminar, and the surgeon presented that kid's case as a study. Not only did he live, the rebar had slid right past the base of the brain, spinal column. It was so close. They had to twist it out like a screw because the ribbing on the bar threatened nerve damage. They literally rebuilt this kid's skull around his brain. His recovery photo was a totally normal kid smiling. He had a small scar on his chin. I say kid, but he was like 17. Just to be clear. Kind of a retelling but one time a cadaver on which I was performing an autopsy had a lung which was flipped upside down. When I tried to flip it to the proper position, bloop, it flipped right back to upside down. After some due diligence we realized the lung was a transplant, and the surgeons who performed the transplant had attached the organ incorrectly. The lung had been fighting to be upside down its whole life in this other man. After 15 or so years, the man eventually moved in a way that allowed it to flip over, resulting in his death. Older woman called 911 for chest pain. Her vital signs were SH and she had the look that anyone who's ever seen a patient about to die will recognize instantly. Her EKG suggested multiple blockages in her coronary arteries. And we had to put her on a ventilator shortly after she got to the ER because she deteriorated so quickly. Cath lab confirmed the EKG findings, complete blockage of one artery and 99% blockage of two other major arteries. Unfortunately it was too extensive to resolve with PCI. So the only option was to fly her to the university hospital in the city for an emergent triple bypass. It turned out that she'd had multiple episodes like this but not quite as severe over the last six months and had refused bypass surgery not once. Not twice, but three times in favor of a Mediterranean diet. Well at this point she didn't have much say anymore and family agreed. So off to the OR she went. I took care of her again about four months later and she actually seemed to have made a remarkable recovery. You know those big, 16 to 18 inch kitchen knives that everyone has? Had a lady come in with one sticking sideways out of her neck handle on the left side and top sticking out the right. 
she went to OR, where they removed the knife in one of the most tense, clenched moments in history. Minimal bleeding. Apparently the knife split right between her major blood vessels and airway. Was lying right against them. Didn't scratch him. Absolutely incredible. Work in a hospital. A guy showed up who had burst a tire going 180 km per hour and flipped his car multiple times. His car was a write-off. The only injuries he got were a few scratches and a bruise. I'm not a doctor but I was diagnosed with Addison's at age 13 or so. Was just generally feeling lethargic. Vomiting. Dizzy. Mom calls the hospital with symptoms and they said if I had all three at the same time to come in to be safe. Orderly or whatever checks my pulse in the lobby. 30 fifteenths. He laughs, well this one's broken, and gets another machine. 30 fifteenths, wait. What? Calls a doctor. They double check it and run me to the ER for fluids. Again. Not a doctor here. But apparently that's not even high enough to have a pulse. They had no clue how I was walking let alone conscious. But saw the numbers and after realizing it was accurate they freaked the hell out. And of course that freaked my mom out. Them telling my mom 30 fifteenths is the BP of a dead person did not help. And then they said it's either autoimmune or cancer. My immune system apparently ate my adrenal glands. Now I'm on meds for life. Lucky me. On the bright side though I never really have to worry about high blood pressure. As an EMT. I audibly gasped at the pressure. I have seen actual, recently, dead people with better pressure than that. My dad. Walked a mile to see a friend and tried to walk up the stairs couldn't get up one step. Walked back one mile to his office. Looked up who his doctor was. Since he hadn't seen one in 20 years. And drove there. No appointment. Doctor hooks him up to an EKG. But it's fine. Tells him there's a cardiologist next door. It's the end of the day. They'll see him. Just in case. They hook him up to a blood pressure monitor while he's on a treadmill. The monitor is behind him. He can't see it. He starts walking. They set a countdown timer for three minutes. And about 30 seconds in. One of the nurses steps out of the room. My dad is watching the timer and it counts down to zero. He feels fine and figures he's going home but the door opens and two ambulance attendants are wheeling in a gurney. While he was on the treadmill. His blood pressure dropped to zero. Then restarted. Then dropped to zero again. The nurse who stepped out of the room dialed 911. They let him finish because they figured as soon as he stopped. The heart attack would start in earnest. Quadruple bypass later and he lived. But note. He said he never felt the same. A bypass is not a panacea.